So it is day six here at the home and hopefully all of you are having a great day. We are going to start uh, basically painting the fireplace as soon as we get some more paint. This is where we left off. Looks really great. I am so pleased with it. And uh, we had a couple people showing concern for the, the paint that we chose for this. And let me start off by saying that the paint that we chose is specific to painting brick. It's actually brick paint. So there's no concern about it chipping whatsoever. Some people were worried about heat. The fireplace is not, um, th there's actually fire brick in there. So the brick that you see on the outside is, is strictly decorative. So it does not actually get warm enough to um, uh, cause any any fumes or chipping or flaking or anything like that. It's it's very well insulated. So um, so there's nothing to worry about there. So yeah, so we're, we're really in love with the color and I hope you are all, we hope you all are as well, <laughs> and uh, and any concerns you had or still have um, are hopefully alleviated. So we'll catch you all later. We um we got to start cleaning up here. We got a mess. <laughs> We're a messy family, so we got a mess to clean up because the carpet guys are coming today. So it's a big day here, and uh, so I got to get started on that. So catch you all in a bit. It's falling apart. I mean, they haven't used that two pack in 30 some years. All right, so we just got back from Port Huron Paint, and as you know, we had to go get more of that because we ran out painting the, uh, the fireplace. While we were out, the carpet guys were working, so we get out of their hair, and that way, there was also so that we weren't breathing the dust and the mildew and whatever else was uh, gross inside the carpet. So let's go check out what they did. This is the first time we've seen it. Wow. Oh my goodness. And also like your voice echoes a lot more. Oh my um, gosh, yeah, it echoes. It, a lot of sound. it echoes so much in here. Woo! Alright, let's go check out the bedrooms. Are you ready, Cindy? Yes. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. What do you think? I love it too. I think I think it matches perfectly the wall. Everything. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. You got such a great deal out of it too. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, Cindy. It's soft. Is it's it? actually soft. Look at this. <laughs> it's oh so nice. Gosh. Yeah. It's something that I've it's something that I've wanted to do for so long, but because the carpet was so grungy, I couldn't and I was afraid to because obviously who knows what's on the carpet. It is so soft. You should totally lay down and feel it. It is great. And for the I want to see the nursery one well, though too. For the first too. time ever, I actually feel like I can call this home. Because before it was like a project that I was doing, but I could never really feel like it was sanitary because the carpet was so gross. Oh, this is amazing. Ready? Let's check out her nursery. You can go, I'll catch up with you in like okay. 10 minutes. I'm gonna fall asleep. Oh, I like what I'm seeing so far. Oh, wow, I love it. Yes, it's really I nice. I absolutely love it. This is a great carpet. I mean, it's obviously got to get clean because, you, I mean, it's it's got to be vacuumed. But, wow, I like the, <laughs> I like the blue and the, the, the tan. It's kind of like the salt and pepper look. It's really nice. And the, the, dark, the dark brown in there will also match the... Uh, the flooring that we're choosing. So that's good job, Cindy. Yeah, no, I'll let you lay down. Lay down on it. Lay down on it. I don't think this one is as soft as the one. This in one is softer. This one is, in fact, softer, honestly. I still feel kind of weird because. Do a carpet just... angel. What do you think? Soft. <laughs> it's good. What are your first thoughts? It's perfect. I love it. So we thought we'd do something kind of fun. In the last vlog you saw us trying to paint the fireplace here and the fireplace brick as you know has extremely deep grooves in between the brick. The grout is really deep and it's also very textured the brick as well as the grout. So we were really struggling to find a way to paint the grout uh, efficiently and really what the people at the paint store said is there's really no good way to go about it. Just get three, two or three old brushes and get ready to mutilate them. So we've already gone through one. I've got another brush, same size what I was using last night. 
Then there was people said, why don't you try a smaller brush? So we got ourselves a smaller brush. And then someone else said, why don't you try a sponge? So I got ourselves a sponge. So smaller brush, sponge, and the, the paintbrush that they suggested using. And we'll just try it out. We'll see which one works. And that way, if you're ever painting brick, I had a bunch of people actually comment and say that they were uh, painting brick and they were really happy to see us going at it first so that they knew kind of the mistakes that might, that, uh, might be made or um, some of the things to go to think about before painting brick. So um, another question, by the way, another question that came up is, did we prime the surface? We did not. We actually just went over it with just uh, not a wire bristle brush, but like a, like a really stiff plastic bristle brush. We just, we just brushed it up and down to get rid of any soft grout that might be um, deteriorating. Uh, dust and stuff like that would be tracked in the pores because um, you don't want to, you don't need to wash it. That'll just take a lot of time. Uh, you just want to get any chunks of grout or dust and debris off of the brick. So we did do a little bit of prep work, but we did not prime it. No need to prime it. Let's try it out here. Let's see, uh, see which one should we use first. I'm really intrigued to try this sponge one. Okay, let's use the sponge yeah. first. So, in terms of in terms of getting it in the crack, much easier. I'll be interested to see how it how it works for long periods of use because I've only dabbed it in, you know, like once. Maybe, yeah, well, yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. We've only gone one dab in the paint, but what I'm saying is the t rough texture mm -hmm. mutilates a brush, and I don't even know what that's going to do to a sponge. I can tell that there's a lot of friction because I can I can hear it catching. You know what I mean? You can hear it kind of, you, you, you don't want to swipe it. So the best thing to do is to dab it, but then dabbing it takes a long time. So I guess now let's give the, let's give the other uh, small brush a try here. This one really gets into the cracks. Ooh, ooh, you know what? Oh boy, that one. That one's quite exciting. That one actually. This one speaks to you. This one speaks to me here. This one gets right in the, right in the crevice. But again, the amount of paint that it holds, I would almost consider this a finishing brush. I don't know. I mean, last night it really. I mean, it was fast with that big brush because you could cover lots of area, mm -hmm. but it was also kind of sloppy and wasteful on the paint. Man, oh man, I might be changing my, I might be changing my method up. I don't know. How long? Let's find a crack that has not been done yet. I'm going to do this crack with this paintbrush. I'm going to do this crack with the large paintbrush because they both have not been done at all and we will time it. And let's go. <laughs> Are you racing? I'm actually working just about as fast as I did last night. Good. <laughs> All right, so that took us a minute and 37 seconds to do one strip of, uh, just one linear strip of grout. Um, so that's quite good, I guess. I mean, I don't really have a time to compare it to. So let's go and, uh, and let's do the big brush now because that will truly define which one comes in first place and which one comes in second. And go. seconds but I had to dip it a few more times what I will say is that the pro to using this brush is that you'll notice we would have to go actually go back and do a second uh, second coat here because the amount of paint on the tiny on this tiny brush just does not put down enough paint to really put down a, a nice thick amount there. See how if I go back, it's actually lighter. It's actually lighter because it's putting down more paint there because it actually absorbs into the grout. When you want to paint, but you forgot your shoes. Now, who gave you that idea? I honestly don't know. 
desperation. So we are down in the basement now. We're cleaning up. Uh, my mom and grandpa came over to actually help, which was so nice of them. And uh, we were just kind of down here, uh, kind of talking away. I saw something really cool that I thought I would show you all. And this was, this happened when they were um, building the home. They were putting the beams up. They must have had some dirt or soot or oil on their hands and forever there will be a, a imprint on this house of the person who helped build it. So check this out. Up on these boards here, you can see a very clear handprint and a handprint and an even better handprint here. So you can see that whoever was putting these up, holding them, had some oil on their hands or something. Must have been a left hand. So one of the things that we found that was really cool was as we were cleaning off uh, the tool bench that actually came with a bunch of tools with the house, they didn't bother to take them, uh, we found a miter box. Now a miter box is so cool. I really wanted to get into woodworking and I wanted to kind of do my own stuff, my own handicrafts. So uh, this is going to be my first, uh, my first little bit into the collection. And a, a miter box came before the uh, came before the miter saw. Now a miter saw basically is a way to um, to cut angles on wood. And they created this this clamp here. And basically, what you do is there's a there's a center spoke here, and this center spoke fits through this hole, and you can adjust it to let's say 45 degrees. And now whatever you cut is exactly 45 degrees, just like that. And this is a really cool tool that has been replaced by, uh, you know, I mean, obviously faster, more powerful equipment. But if the power ever goes out and you were in a pinch, you needed something, this will certainly pull through on the job. Whereas a electronic or a electric miter saw would not. So we're all finished, and it looks amazing. What do you think, Cindy? I really love it. However, it did take. Quite some time. How many how much hours do you think we put into it? Total? Yeah. Oh. Total probably oh man. At least four, oh, four maybe five hours. It was yes. a long time. But it's so worth it. You know, there was uh, a question uh, mm -hmm. that came up quite a bit about, you know, what is this channel gonna be about? And so I wanted to answer that question because uh, I think, it's, I think it's kind of important to let everyone know kind of what they're gonna be seeing in the future because obviously renovations will be finishing up in about a week or two. And, uh, and so there'll always be little here and there things, but uh, Cindy, why don't you tell them what they're gonna see for the future of, of Mikasa? Well, anything and everything in between our life, like running Emma Gardner, um, cooking, Luke has a great talent of cooking, so I'm sure he's going to bring you guys along. Um, so you guys can see his awesome recipes that he does. Um, maybe seeing Geneva's first birthday. Just kind of things that we do in a normal day-to-day -day basis or things that we think would be kind of helpful for you guys too. So um, we're excited about that. And uh, maybe just some DIY things around the home. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, no, cause we're <laughs> definitely going to, even though the name is Mikasa Vlogs, that's our channel name, it's one of the things that I always really like to do is tutorials because I think not being a professional, showing it, you know, how it is uh, and our, our learning process, um, you know, that really helps to help people like you that might be wanting to do something similar and say, well, if he did it, I can do it. And trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. So, so we'll definitely be doing like tutorials and how to's along the way um, and things like that. So let us know if there's anything you want to see in the comments box below as well, because we definitely will be doing episodes. Like for instance, our, our, uh, cabinet refacing, that's not going to be a daily vlog like this, that's actually going to be its own episode on how to reface cabinets because uh, it's going to be a long process and it's also going to be a very fun process that a lot of people are going to want to tune in for. So anyways, we're going to get heading home, it's late, I'm starving, Geneva, what, or, Geneva, what about you? <laughs> She's sleepy. Cindy, what about you, are you pretty hungry? Yes. <laughs> so uh, my mom said that there's enchiladas at home, so I'm ready for some, so I'm ready for some enchiladas. Mm -hmm. We'll catch you later. As always, remember, mi casa es su casa.